Okay, this vintage toy is a TV robot and it was made by a company and I'm not sure if it's pronounced Paya or Paya in Spain and I'm thinking late 60s early 1970s. Um, this one is repaired now and I'll show you the operation in just a minute but the uh, the hardest thing about repairing these toys that are plastic and glued together there's no screws there when they're built they glue them because of course you have to get in there to fix things which means you're gonna have to cut seams and I'm gonna show you the way that I like to put the toys back together once the seams have been cut so that they can be opened again more easily and it's also uh, reversible so I haven't done anything to damage the toy other than of course open it up now the biggest problem with these toys by Paya is the metal there is a metal frame on the inside that the motor in this case or in the in case of their other one the wind-up motor is on a metal frame is held to the front of the body normally with four very thin plastic pins two of the pins are just for alignment and two of the pins have screws in them and the pins are just barely bigger around than the screws so anyway basically those are always broken so the guts and everything in there are usually floating around free which means things are aren't going to work some of the notable things about the toy is the, uh, the moving pictures in the TV screen is a continuous uh, paper loop which is backlit, backlit and it's an almost identical copy of what Alps did in their TV robot back in 1960 uh, one of the differences being that they didn't put a magnifying lens here in the front to make the uh, image appear bigger. They they simply brought the paper roll up to the front instead of looping it to the back. They drive it with a uh, a flex drive. And again, they do a very poor job of that because it, it rubs on uh, drive wheels and other things that it shouldn't, but that's the way it was designed. And uh, it has flashing eyes. The the batteries are very difficult to install in these toys especially nowadays because batteries have actually gotten physically larger as all you collectors of vintage toys know they're not only slightly bigger in diameter they're slightly longer and these particular types of gearboxes do not like longer ones so fitting these in is very hard to do especially when you're trying to hold on to a fragile plastic uh, body shell and not break anything you almost have to reach in and, and hold on to the metal while you're trying to get them in there I think uh, I've heard that dollar store in this case these are C-cells batteries are smaller like the old vintage batteries used to be just a hair shorter millimeter shorter and a little bit smaller in diameter so they might be a better choice for something like this the uh, We'll get to some inside pictures where you can see better what's going on, but basically the on-off switch is right here. These drive wheels have uh, concentric pins which move these outer foot shields. And the only thing that drives these wheels is some rubber wheels which are further up inside. And again, I'm going to show you all that in just a second. And I think we might as well turn it on so you can see it, how the arms move, the feet move and have the pictures scroll by All right let's let's get into the repair the main problem with this robot when I received it and again I'm moving the camera so you can see these pictures that I took as I was doing the repair work because it's impossible to do it any other way. What you're looking at there is what was left of the motor in the frame. And there'll be more pictures showing you how this motor fits in the frame. But basically the entire motor, with the exception of the magnet here, the, this is one of the bands of metal that loops around. There's one each side and a magnet in between them. It's plastic. And the whole thing had just come apart. I'm thinking maybe this buildup of rust on the metal put enough pressure that the plastic just started cracking and came apart. And there was no way to glue it back together and have things turned. Uh, that's, it just wouldn't rotate right. 
So let's see what else we got here. Okay, here's a picture of the frame. Here's the back. The batteries should be coming up here. Here's that little switch. This is the uh, gearbox right here that the motor would normally sit in from here, right there, over to here. And then this whole gearbox flips over and these tabs go into these slots. This flex drive goes up to drive the whole TV screen mechanism. And as you can see where it comes out below this wheel, these are the wheels that actually rub on those wheels to drive the robot hits very severely on this tire but it was designed that way so again kind of a piss poor design here's kind of an overview of uh, all the parts so you can see the inside of the front shell here's a, a couple of the posts that are left these were the ones that were mostly for alignment then there were two more that actually had the screws and they would go through small holes to try to hold the whole thing together but uh, those are always broken or stripped What's left of the motor sitting here, those are the brushes. This picture you just saw. This is the rarer NASA version. Here's the legs up here and the head is sitting up here. You're getting another close-up of the motor. And since it wasn't salvageable, I had to find a motor that I could put in its place. So I went out to my robot junk pile and pulled out this uh, motor which actually was in a uh, repro uh, chief robot man which is a, a reproduction robot you can still buy to right now and the only real problem the diameter is right and the gear was right once I pressed it further in because it has to be almost all the way in in order to not hang up in the gearbox is it's shorter so I decided what I do is I would pre -d uh, 3d print a adapter which fits snugly around the motor to the back brings it out to the proper length and adds the little uh, nipple piece that you need on the back side to fit into the frame. This is a picture of the frame that the motor fits in. This is where the nipple on the back of the motor would go. Here's where the nipple on the front of the motor goes and this gear right here is the one that the motor drives. And like I say, the gear has to be far enough back that it doesn't drag on this gear. This cam is a, uh, the cam for flashing the lights up in the head. And here's a close-up of those wheels, which actually drive the bigger ones. And you can see the flex drive comes out to go up to the TV network. And there's a close-up of the TV. As you can see, the flex drive's coming up and drives gears. And they basically have dual rollers, which are pinched with springs to apply pressure to uh, pull the paper loop around. There's a, a light bulb that goes down on the inside to... Uh, light up the light and again unlike the Alps the uh, the artwork in this thing basically looks like a low-cost comic book whereas the one in the Alps is a very high quality uh, sci-fi artwork like you might see in the cover of a pulp magazine from the 30s or 40s just just really fantastic okay here's the top of it here's the lamp like I was talking about that illuminates the pictures and again you can see the spring that keeps tension on that roller Another view from the bottom. Here's what's left of one of those posts that I was telling you. Normally this piece of plastic would be part of the front shell and a screw coming through and there'd be another one over there. As you can see, they're very small. There's just no way it was gonna hold all this metal inside a plastic shell. Just putting the batteries in would break those. And a backside of the TV. On the arms, these pins uh, interconnect with the top of the legs. When the legs come up, there's a slot that those go in. So as the legs rock back and forth, that's what makes the uh, the arms move. Okay, here's the new motor fitted into the gearbox. So this piece here that I made that goes all the way around the motor, and there's the nipple that fits in the back, brings it to the right size to go in. And you can see there's not a whole lot of clearance there, but there wasn't with the original motor either. And here it is installed. You can see part of the motor. These things coming out are what uh, the feet slide onto to make the feet shuffle forward and backward. Now you can see how the weight of the robot pushes these drive wheels down onto these free turning wheels to make them move. Here it is from the back. 
you can see the switch more clearly here the wheels the new motor nothing's wired up yet everything's still laying loose this is the the light flasher um, this way here the white the white plastic was a different type of plastic than the body plastic and because this flux drive comes out they couldn't push this wheel further in this side has room between the wheel and the body when everything's put together this side the wheel literally rubs against the body a lot of toys that have different types of plastic get a chemical reaction through the years between the two and, and it had happened on this one it, it kind of it looks like they've been melted and they can actually fuse together if left that way long enough and uh, there's no way to uh, I mean I can push this wheel further in on the axle but you can't because of that flex drive which is where the you know if that flex drive had come up a little higher or if they'd put a uh, a pinion gear in there and then, then a crown gear so the drive would be going straight up they could have moved the wheel in but they didn't another view all this uh, wafty looking stuff is is part of the uh, the cardboard the paper board that's used on the battery box on one side and who knows how long that'll last with new batteries pushing on it. Same kind of fiberboard that's used here. It's just gone all puffy. So in the end, I'll try to salvage that by uh, uh, putting super glue in and hitting it with speed set and, and holding it together as much as possible. Just more angled views so you can see how things sit. See here now we have the, the legs put on. They go into those pins on the lower wheels. There is a metal rod that goes through here to keep them aligned and they interfaced with those pins on the hands. As you can see here the leg part comes up and there's a slot for those and the slot there. These are these small plastic pieces that you push on to the pins that came off those two lower drive wheels. And again this is with the legs and everything assembled. You can see how right up against it's actually not the body that they rub against it's right up the inside of the leg they're basically one but there just isn't any room to even though there's splines to push that wheel in further like the other side like I say the other side has plenty of clearance more shots here's the two halves so when I have a plastic toy that I know is not held together with screws and was glued and there's a very good chance that down the road someone's going to need to take it apart again what I like to do is take um, cardstock like uh, the heavy cardboard like when you buy something the, the cardboard that's on the back part of it anyway you get yourself some uh, cardstock and uh, glue them in on either side using goop glue which is a flexible glue. It's very much like a, a silicone glue and how flexible it is, but it's not silicone. And glue them in, and when you're ready to put it together, if you put glue on either side, it'll hold everything together. And that way, if the toy has to be taken apart, a person can take a very sharp knife and go down and cut the two cardboard strips, and you can then separate the halves maybe you might need more maybe in your case you might need tabs other places but the point is you could get in there with a sharp uh, exacto knife or something of that nature and cut them and once they're cut apart you can then clean all of the the goop glue off because the nice thing about it is it can be removed it's not permanent it won't ever let go on its own but you can get in there and scrape it off and start with a new surface and put it back together in order to initially get the parts apart you have to cut it and if you're lucky enough to own a, uh, a sonic knife, that'd be the way to go. If you're not, then a jeweler saw. Have I got one here? Let me pick one out of here. If you don't, then a jeweler saw like this, or sometimes they're just called hobby saws. It takes a long time to get a straight, clean cut without removing any more material than necessary. But that's the best way to do it. So let's see, are there any more pictures? Or we covered it all. No, I think we're just down to the beauty shots where it's uh, together and you've already seen it operate. So I believe 
That's all the information I have to share on this rare TV robot made by Paya in Spain. And I hope you enjoyed it.